Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Toronto Danforth. I was really happy to be able to speak previously to Jewish Heritage Month, and so it's a pleasure to once again have a chance to rise and to speak with you about this important private member's bill that's going to give an opportunity to all of us to celebrate our Jewish heritage here in this country. As someone who is proud to now live in Toronto, one of the parts that I really enjoy is the opportunity that this bill will give for people as an encouragement to discover our heritage in Toronto and our history of Jewish Canadians living in Toronto. Jews have been in Toronto, the Jewish people, since the early 19th century, but since the 1970s, we've become the largest Jewish community in the whole country. Now we number about 200,000 people, and we have made our mark in the, country, in the city, showing all of the things that we can contribute in so many ways through our cultural centers, our art, and through our food, which I will get to, because the last time I spoke about bagels, and we have so much more tremendous food in the city. One of the parts that I really enjoy is the music. For me, Jewish music, klezmer music, is something that really makes me happy. And this year, being that it's 2018, marks my 20th wedding anniversary, in fact, in August. And at our wedding, we had the Flying Bulgar Klezmer Band. We had klezmer music. It was a really wonderful way for us to celebrate the day. And so, you know, with, with 20 years ago, I get to bring back some memories of some great music. Flying Bulgar Klezmer Band just celebrated their, their 30th anniversary. And they celebrated that with a concert at Hughes Room in Toronto. So just a chance for us to get out there and listen to the music that we have in our city. There is an Ashkenaz festival that has often happened down at the harbour front, uh, a place where you can go and you listen to music and, and really enjoy and celebrate together. When I think about Jewish Heritage Month, I get to think about things like that, chances to get out and to really enjoy our music and celebrate. I always like to also think about things like film. And many years ago, I went to the Jewish Film Festival. They, in fact, this year, it will be May 3rd to the 13th, so people can go out and get their tickets. But the one that I remember from the last time that I went to the movie that I remember was Havana Nagila, which was a film, it's very topical for the moment because we're on the eve of Passover, of people, Jewish Canadians, who went down to Cuba to help Jewish Cubans celebrate Passover by bringing matzah and, and Haggadot and to have a chance to celebrate and to see the different ways that we in different countries can celebrate the holiday. Uh, but it's opportunities like that, going out and seeing movies, listening to the music and telling the stories that really we can hear and experience our Jewish heritage. Um, when I was thinking about films, it's not just the Jewish Film Festival. There's also a Jewish Film Society that is at the Miles Nadal Center. And that is, in fact, celebrating 40 years. Of, so this is a year full of anniversaries, apparently. It's celebrating 40 years this year. It is the longest running Jewish Film Society in all of North America. And it's based right in Toronto. So the film festival was founded in, or the film society was founded in 1978, and they have eight Jewish film events throughout the year. It was discussions. People have an opportunity to learn more about these films and speak about them. The next one is coming up on April 8th, and it's called Hannah's Journey. So that's it. It might be a little bit of a spicy film. I was looking at the description. It might be a little controversial. It might be an interesting choice for people who are looking for a film. The next one after that, if you can't make April 8th, is on June 3rd. And it is called Melting Away. And it's going to be a Jewish film, but in celebration of Pride, because it's also happening during Pride Month. So these are ways that we can see how Jewish history is evolving in, in, our, in our city through the arts, with our music and our films, and there are opportunities to enjoy them every day in our city, but with Jewish Heritage Month, it will give us an extra impetus to go out and try and seek those opportunities. There's a lot more that happens at the Miles Nadal Center as well. It is right down on Spadina and Bloor, it's downtown hub location. It's somewhere where people can go and get Yiddish lessons. 
Uh, so maybe Jewish Heritage Month, people will want to get out and to, to renew the Yiddish language. I have to say it's one of those things that I've noticed in my own family. My, my grandparents spoke Yiddish perfectly well. My father a little bit less well. Me, uh, well, you know, they use it as a secret language to talk about things when they didn't want me to understand. I don't really understand Yiddish at all. But when I saw that there are Yiddish lessons at Miles Nadal, I thought, hmm, this is my, un this is my chance to understand when my dad is talking to others in Yiddish what he's talking about. Well, I might seek out some of these lessons. They also do Shabbat together. Um, I particularly like the No Shush Shabbat. That is a noisy by design Shabbat for people who feel like you know, they might feel not welcome with families, you know, young kids, it's loud. Opportunity for people to rediscover Shabbat and to the community meal that it brings together. Oh, what I really love about the vibrancy of the Jewish community in Toronto is that it has so many different aspects like that and such an inclusive feel with opportunities for people who maybe haven't really thought about their Jewish heritage or want to learn more about it to be able to jump in and learn more. It's kind of an exciting thing. When I think about Jewish heritage in Toronto though, and many of you may have watched you know, on CBC in the past, I think about the King of Kensington because that is such a, you know, if I thought about the one person who I saw on TV who was a Jewish person and, you know, what, what that kind of meant as, as part of our cultural history and our television history, the King of Kensington. And just down the street from the Miles Nadal Center is the Kensington Market. Uh, that's where the, the TV show was based. There are, in fact, walking tours that people can take if you're interested in Jewish history. If during Jewish Heritage Month you're interested in getting out there and learning more, you can in fact take a walking tour through uh, the Kensington Market and to learn about how the Jewish community really came together in the Kensington Market in the 1920s and, and built up the market. Now it's changed, it's not a largely Jewish community anymore, but there are still parts of the history that you can find there, including some synagogues. Um, and it's a chance to really see how the life continues to be vibrant and change over. So I recommend, you know, May is a nice warm month. Get out there, take a walking tour, go walk around in the Kensington Market. Think about the King of Kensington. So I'd like to close off, Mr. Speaker, because last time I, I, I closed off speaking about food, and, and again, we're at that uh, hour of the day where I start thinking about food again. So I'd like to, to close off with talking about some Jewish food. And in Toronto, we now have Nosh Fest, which I think is a wonderful idea. It happened in October last year at the Artscape Witchwood Barns. They had cooking demonstrations and kids' activities and klezmer music, but also a chance to eat all sorts of Jewish foods like dill pickles, knishes, even new twists on knishes, bagels, rugula. And because Passover's around the corner, I guess I have to mention it, they had gefilte fish. Not my favorite of the Jewish foods, but they had it there was something for people to go and check out. One of the things that I thought about when I think about heritage, sometimes you think about mementos you have in your kitchen, things that you bring back childhood memories. For me, it is a cookbook called Second, Help, Second Helpings Please. The, lots of Jewish households across the country, we had that cookbook. They actually had a signing at Noshfest where they have a renewed Second Helpings Please and they had a signing by the author of the cookbooks. I, I'm going to have to go check that out and try out some of the recipes during Jewish Heritage Month because that brings a particular smile. I can remember my mom kind of piling through the pages of that book. I know that my time is coming to an end, Mr. Speaker, so I will just leave it as remembering that we are heading into Passover just around the corner. <clears throat> to me, it's one of the most important holidays. It's a chance to slow down, spend time with family, to share stories, and to talk about our heritage. It's where we build our heritage and our future from it. And so as we head into Jewish Heritage Month, I really want to thank uh, the member from New York Center for bringing this to us because this is going to be a chance to celebrate so much of what we have that is so vibrant in the <coughs> Jewish community across Canada, but in Toronto in particular. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member.